on a BV chartered flight. There were eight students, six from Barbados, one from Antigua, and one from uh, St. Chris Nevis. There were two women and six men. They also had a bunch of public health nurses with them going to Jamaica for training. Now it was a chartered flight, so we didn't have to pay for luggage and that sort of thing, so I brought along my bicycle. <laughs> and I had a trunk of clothes rather than a suitcase. <laughs> now we thought we were the first students there, but lo and behold, there was a chap from um, St. Lucia, Clive Charles. He came to us from um, Dalhousie University in, um, in, in Halifax. And uh, he was among the first students there. Accommodation in those days, were Gibraltar Hall, which was, um, I wouldn't say a prison of war camp, but it was involved with um, taking, taking, uh, taking care of people during the last war. There were wooden huts, and they looked rather primitive from outside, but inside they were quite nice. The other wooden huts included the uh, library, the chapel, lecture halls, lab spaces, the kitchen, eating facilities, and telephone facilities, and the porter's lodge, and the post office. Altogether, we were quite comfortable, and there was also a common room for rest and relaxation. The first lecture was on the 4th of October, 1948, at 8 a.m. by Professor Huffle. He was from <laughs> New Zealand and had a lift. <laughs> it was on, in, on organic chemistry. Now, and in those days, I don't know how it is now, but in those days at half past 10, we, re we returned to, kitchen, to the kitchen and we got um, lemonade or what have you, or a drink of some sort. Then we had lectures and labs from 2 p.m. in the afternoon until 5 in the evening. Now, supper, supper was at 7 o'clock, and in those days, there was silence from 8 p.m. onwards as everyone was studying in those days. <laughs> Things have improved since then. Our first class, as I mentioned, had 23 men and 10 women, the original 33. We were from most of the islands in the Caribbean, and all were represented except, all races were represented except the indigenous population, which came later. Science education varied. At least two students had no science education at all. I had a general science education from a Cambridge school certificate, at fifth form level. Now, that lasted for three weeks, and after three weeks, I was in new territory. <laughs> Fifteen of us were presented, with, presented to the London examiners and in, uh, in 1954, and 13 of us got through on first attempt, to the astonishment of the Jamaican medical fraternity. The other two got through six months later. Why I say to the astonishment? They felt what we were learning up there was couldn't be anything at all. <laughs> and when, when, the, um, when the London examiners are finished with us, you might have one chap passing and the others failing. As new doctors, we had predecessors as house officers trained in the United Kingdom, which included three Caribbean persons. Being a, very host, being a house officer as a young doctor was very different from being a medical student. It was hard work, long hours, and sometimes awful responsibility. But it was a long to learning experience. We were trained in the Caribbean, so we were familiar with the diseases that we came across without any, um, any undue stress and strain. With regard to the doctors from England, a lot of them were seeing a colored patient for the first time in their lives. And, um, well, my, my, my wife, she was in charge of one of the outpatient departments. And when the church could not make head nor tail of what the case was, she would write down the diagnosis on a piece of paper and ease it to the fellow when the mother is looking. Now, before closing, I want to leave one or two little anecdotes. The Vice Chancellor, Dr. Taylor, from Oxford University, and when he was addressing the student body, every now and then his false teeth would slip. <laughs> and he had the knack of catching them. 
<laughs> what, what they dropped out of his mouth. You know? <laughs> that really had us spellbound. <laughs> well, when he went back to, uh, to, to, um, to England on the first summer, he changed his, his dentures. So after that, that, that was no longer a problem. <laughs> In the very first year, there was a mango plantation just, just over the fence from the campus where we lived, you know. So chaps used to go across there and uh, raid the mangoes at night. Well, one night now, the manager, I don't think it was the owner, the manager arrived with a car and took six of us to the police station <laughs> with mangoes in bags as evidence. <laughs> well, naturally, say we are scared like hell, but anyway, nothing came of it. And in looking back in the old years now, I am thinking it was an arrangement between the manager and the police to frighten us of stealing the mangoes. Well, after that, nobody else went across to, to get the mangoes. Uh, in concluding, I would like to mention a gift which I received from God. In 1949, January 49, a certain student nurse appeared with five others. Six of them came in. I saw one nurse. It was a life-changing experience for me. I approached after church and we are still very good friends today. <laughs> the other day, she whispered to me that you are also a gift from God. <laughs>